Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Caravalo from ZK Research, and I'm here at the uh, lovely Four Seasons Palo Alto at the Zoom Perspectives 2023 event, which is Zoom's analyst conference. And I'm jo joined by uh, Juran Huang. Everybody calls you XD, though. Yes, thank uh, you. Who's the new CTO of Zoom? You started a couple months ago now. Just a month ago. Just a month ago. So uh, congratulations on one month. Uh, tell me a bit about your background, though. Well, um, I spent 30 years in Microsoft. My last job was Azure AI CTO. I did uh, oversee all the AI services at Microsoft, from speech to computer vision to Azure Open AI services. Okay, so you're the Azure AI CTO, so that's fitting because obviously AI has become this big freight train that's run over the communications industry. Isn't that true? <laughs> well, I think AI is really uh, yeah. uh, an amazing tool to help everyone, including communication and the collaboration arena. Yeah. So why does it matter to this industry, the communications and contact center and collaboration space? Well, when you think about the communication, the most natural media is our language. We talk. Yes. So speech and the language will be essential in the center of communication. Um, AI is definitely making a tremendous progress to actually make it that easier to break down language barrier to help you to understand the context and to facilitate task completion. Okay, so yeah, it, I think it removes a lot of the way I've described it is a lot of heavy lifting that we do in collaboration uh, that AI can take care of for us. So we're not doing as much manual stuff and we can actually just get to work faster. Is that fair? Yeah, I think it, you're right. Um, AI is already helping us to write better, to understand better, to summarize better. So if you can really bring all those capabilities together, together with speech, you can really increase the productivity and the ease of use. That is in the DNA of Zoom services. Yeah, so uh, within this industry, uh, you and your peers, um, AI has been a big topic. It was a big topic at Enterprise Connect. UC Expo is coming up, and I assume it's going to be a big topic there. Every analyst conference I go to, it's a big topic. So how is Zoom approaching artificial intelligence? So Zoom is unique in the sense that we have this massive custom base yes, in, very using big. the video. Yeah. Video is a superset of audio and the language because both speech and the language yeah. is embedded in the video. So with that massive usage, we can get the user consent to have a small percentage of data to train our AI. That's number one. And you're talking both consumer and enterprise, right? That's right. Yeah. And we also want to create uh, this federated solution building on the shoulders of fantastic model from OpenAI, Anthropic, and uh, Meta. We are going to really synthesize and uh, massage the best model we can get to deliver the solution that can delight our customers. Okay, so That is a very unique approach. Yeah, so uh, double click on the term federated. Uh, I've not heard that from other unified communications or contact center vendors. Uh, lots of them talk about being multi-vendor. So how, ex explain what federated means vis-a-vis -vis what you might hear from multi-vendor. So federated learning is one of the you know, well-established method to preserve user privacy, to actually combine multiple distributed learning together. So we are extending that concept to include the multiple large language models. I'll give you an extreme case. That's not what we want to do, but the extreme case is you have a task, you can ask Anthropic, Meta Lama V2, and uh, GPT-4 to perform the task. Then we create a Zoom AI ranker to pick the best or you know, use part of the answers from all three to put the best answers together. That's one extreme example okay. of federated AI. So federated, so while other vendors might use all those models, you're actually integrating that data together and synthesizing it. That's right. Right, okay. But we don't want to really increase the cost by three times. Okay you know, have the same task being performed by three models. We want to understand the, the strength. This is very much like, you know, you are the leader. You, are, you bring the best from everyone in your team together, so the combined output is much better than each individual. That is actually a good example. Okay, and so um, from a customer perspective, without getting into any NDAs or future use cases, give, just give me a simple example of how that federated model and enterprise might take advantage of that, what maybe give me a use case. A use case is really, if when you actually meet with people in the meeting, before the meeting, we can prepare you better to 
engage with people. When you're in the meeting, we have accessibility feature with speech and uh, summarization to help you to get the key points. After the meeting, we'll provide a summary and help you to really be more productive. So the underlying Zoom AI with federated priority will give you the best experience, most cost-effective solution. Yeah, again, what I like about that actually, what you talked about there is I think a lot of the focus of AI in communications has been uh, the in-meeting experience. Translation, you talked about transcription, even virtual backgrounds as a form of AI. Uh, when you talk about preparing me for a meeting, now you're talking about the whole meeting life cycle, right? Because there's a pre portion, there's a post portion, and then there's the meeting. And I think um, uh, the way I've described it is if you think about, um, uh, you know, if you had your own personal assistant, uh, there's always whispering stuff into your ears, maybe you wouldn't need AI, but not everybody has that, right? And so AI can actually help you with a lot of that early heavy lifting and the stuff at the end of the meetings. Is that a good way to think about That's it? That's a very good example. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that with our amazing ability to understand the spoken language, you essentially have your assistant helping you all the time, before the meeting, in the meeting, and after the meeting. Yes, yeah. Now, one of the things you brought up, which I think is an important point to dive deep on, is the data that you have, right? And so not, AI is only as good as the data that you have. Uh, you've got lots of competitors. Many are smaller than you, so they don't have the same size data set. But when it comes to AI, I think there's been a lot of, let's say, trepidation in the industry because they've tested, they played with ChatGPT, and it gives you funny answers. And my, what I've told people is that, look, it's a little like search, right? I'm going to use Google to ask them what the weather is, to find out if the Red Sox won, things like that. But if I'm a lawyer, that search box will appear in LexisNexis. And if I'm a financial services person, that search box will appear in Dow Jones. But those are curated data sets, mm -hmm. right? And so what you're able to bring with your Zoom customer base, talk about that, that curated data set, so customer, you're not building on the internet, you're building on your data, correct? We won't really take advantage of all the AI capabilities out there. That's why we are pushing the federal AI. So we are not ruling out any existing AI capabilities. So you can actually bring the two together. Yes. We want just, you know, really the ease of use is the key. So we, because we have hosted most of the meetings, and as a matter of fact, most important things are being discussed in the meeting for business users. Yes. So we want to find a way to really bring the best from OpenAI, Anthropic, and Meta together with our own capability. That is the essential concept of Zoom Federated AI priorities. Okay, I got it. Now, uh, just a couple more questions. Now, you talked about being able to tap into the data from your massive customer base. If I'm hearing that as a customer, I might think, gee, it's, is my data secure, right? And uh, how do you, so how do you protect your customers but still have access to their data to be able to use it to build your models? So we are treating data very responsibly and transparently. So we will ask a small percentage of our customer base, is it okay to use the data to improve AI experiences? If they give us the consent, we will actually secure the data, using that data only for improving AI experiences. That's our approach. Okay. So it's, uh, it's opt-in? It's, it's not opt-in. We will actually specifically oh, you ask the spe okay. user to give us the consent. And then if they give you consent, how are you securing it? Then we'll actually use the data to improve AI in the secure environment. Okay. And it's metadata, really, right? It's not a lot of sensitive data. We will actually ask the user to give us permission. Okay. If they, for example, if you are giving a talk, not the whole audio and video is wide open. Yeah. If the user is willing to share that data with us, we'll use the data to improve AI experiences. All right. Well, that's actually, that, I think that should be, be, put, uh, keep people's mind uh, yes. at ease. Yeah. We will so. never use data without the user's consent. Okay. That, then that's, uh, thanks for clarifying that. That's important. So, uh, and just, uh, you know, one last question here. So if you think about, um, you know, a year from now, uh, without, again, without getting into specific NDAs, what, what should users expect from Zoom in the areas of AI? I think for the communication and collaboration workloads, we will offer unmatched experiences to enhance people's capability to communicate and collaborate. Okay. Truly fulfill our vision to connect people. 
Okay, and that does that translate to the contact center side as well? Uh, the AI is more expensive than software. Now the unified the AI stack will help to support all Zoom products. Okay. All right, XD. Well, uh, thanks to the tutorial on what Federated AI is, and uh, you know, thanks again for how, sharing Zoom's vision. I appreciate you being on Zcast. Thank you. So, so My thank pleasure. you. Okay. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're watching this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.